Kev, what are we talking about today? We are going to talk about a handful of architecture channels on YouTube that you should follow. Cool. Andrew Maynard, Kevin Huey, welcome to Archie Marathon. Welcome to Argy Marathon. Don't let me stop you. I'm Welcome to, to Argy Marathon. I'm here to help you. Welcome to Argy Marathon. Don't let me stop you. <laughs> Got to roll through. If you need to the channel. Sorry for I'll try not to interrupt again. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. No, but seriously, I won't. If you're new to the channel, we talk about architecture, travel, education, and other shenanigans. So this week, we're going to talk about what we don't talk about. I guess. What we don't talk about in Archie Marathon? Well, we don't really need to talk about because there's plenty of other good channels out there that's doing a really good job. Cool. I think a lot of, yeah, a lot of people are asking us to do kind of uh, tutorial things, how to get a job. Uh, although we did do the job interview one. Um, Which is up there somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. But it's really about uh, unspoken things. Big mindsets, way of thinking. You know, we, we want to focus on architecture and a bigger way of thinking. So there are a lot of uh, YouTube channels that are more tutorial based. Last All right, so I haven't seen any of these. I, I don't really look at architecture on YouTube, but this will be interesting. So you're going to show us? Yeah, some... I, I think, yeah, we're going to look at a few um, and also why we think they are worthwhile. So last week's episode was about what is architecture versus building? And I think that's a big, important question. Um, and not many people, I don't think many ch channels are really tackling architecture as a topic. I think a lot of them look at little skills-based things and very specific issues we try to talk about. You should check out that video up here. And there's lots of great comments. I, there was some lots of good definitions that people threw in the comments of that video. So it's worth having a look at. Yeah, so what's great about this is uh, this channel called What is Architecture, WIA, they ask a few questions for famous architects. So they ask what is architecture for each individual architect? Uh, what can architecture do? Which is a very important question because it's not just stylistic fluff. And what is your particular architecture position? What do you believe in? And what is your design method? So there's actually really, really good conversations they have, usually about 10 minute of video. They're great questions, aren't they? Because it seems like every architect and students as well should ask, should have answers to those things. Um, if they're not, then they're probably missing things from their from their thinking. Um, and what's also good about it, I don't think it's too early to start answering those questions because it can evolve over time and change exactly. radically. My, it, my design thinking's changed radically over the years. And I think that's something that you should examine frequently, if not weekly, mm -hmm. if not even daily. It's like, why, again, we go back to the question, why do we do this? What, what is it that you believe in? And yeah, it will change. But yeah. you need to formulate it, to, to say it, to, to document it, mm. and to evaluate it. Because otherwise it just sits there in the ether of brainwaves that never kind of see the light of day. Yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, yeah, so you've got pretty big guns there. They got Saarbrook Hutton. They had Herman Hertzberger there, which is one of our favourites. Mm. Uh, Asymptote. They had, I think, I saw Peter Cook somewhere. Lots of know. internationally significant architects. And um, and Van Berkel. Yeah. And like Patrick, Patrick Schumacher. Corpima Blau. Yeah, it's uh, Snow Hetter. Greg Lynn. So they they again completely completely different architects, but it's interesting to hear these very primal, very difficult to answer questions uh, post to them. So yeah. yeah, check that out. That's that's a great channel. Just gonna do a brief mention. There are a lot of channels out there that talk about architecture, but they're not, well, they talk about buildings. They talk about great little projects. For example, there's a couple of channels. There's Never Too Small, which is from Australia, and they do beautiful footage. Uh, and also uh, Kirsten Dirksen, uh, they do tiny little houses and sustainable things. So, yeah, both channels look at the, the part, of, part of the tiny house movement. They do a really good job. I think there's, they already got a huge following. But, yeah, they're, they're more specific on those topic. But, yeah, I think there, there are plenty of channels out there that, that's already looking at these beautiful, cinematic, slow walkthrough of these projects. So we don't, we don't need more of those. Um, I guess oh, come we, on. 
you're good at them. You're good at B race. No, 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 no. So I think what we're going to do, uh, mainly looking at more important and seminal projects that we can learn from, um, and tell them, tell, explain to people why they matter, why why they great. So just rather like, than you know, filming architecture and making it look like porn, just making it look beautiful. It's about a critical view, a critical eye on the project. Definitely, yeah. Out of these uh, ones that are slow cinematic shots that talk about architecture, is this channel called Fourth Wall. It's just got a lot of buildings. You know, there's Kaiser Forum, Rongshop. You know, there's a whole series of them that talks about these uh, important projects. And he does this beautiful. I mean, I was looking at his stuff and thinking, yeah, if I had the time and energy and equipment and skills, I would love to do that. Beautiful. And so are these these mainly just B rolls, or is there also well, a discussion? I guess it is a bit slow because it does have these beautiful B-rolls, but then he does roll into talking, at this, uh, not so much a discussion, a presentation about the project, what he thinks is important. And he actually goes and make diagrams of the building or the topic he's talking about to explain it. So, which I think it's a great effort and it's good to support that, to have someone to go more than images and trying to break it down for a viewer to understand what makes these buildings special. Cool. Yeah. Fourth wall. Then we have another guy. This guy is, I think, Martin is a Dutch guy. He lives in Japan. It's called One Minute Architecture. I mean, that already sounds great, just to have mm. short, quick videos that talk about architecture. And I, I saw that, that Sana one, the first video there, that, that Sana one, when you catch the train from uh, Narita, Narita Station, if you look out the, the right-hand side of the train, you'll actually see that on the way. It's halfway between Narita and Tokyo. Um, so it's really good. I went and looked at it on the way back to the to the airport. It's a, it's a great one, to get a freebie on the way out of town. Interesting, because I think uh, his view is quite critical of it. Oh, it's very easy to be critical of that building. I do actually think it's interesting in terms of placemaking, but it's not really anything to do with the architecture. It's yeah, a defensive well, barrier against the train line. And that's a great term. That's a great thing because in terms of place as well, because, uh, again, uh, just like Fourth Wall does as well, um, with Martin's channel here, um, One Minute Architecture, he does uh, show you the context of, you know, riding his bike to get to it. You know, he shows you the context, you know, more like a traditional travel blog. And you see the context and then he, he shows you all the things that you then, in, in his case, is they're not pretty cinematic shots. They are just like, yeah, you go visit a building. This is what a lay person would even be able to shoot. And but he does have a critical eye and talk about it. For example, that when he talks about the signage and stuff, everything looks like second thought. They've just been put in afterwards. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, um, again, the great great to have a critical eye at it than just worshiping star architects. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't help anybody. You end up travelling to buildings that somebody shot beautifully without actually showing you the, the dodgy parts. Does he actually pull it off? Is it actually are these one minute videos? Uh, this one here, the two minutes, two minutes, that's like incredible. this one here. That's incredible to actually have, that's a three minute video and he's explaining one building it. Yes. We so know you can see from that. making these videos, it's bloody hard to make a short video. So he just makes, he just shows the contextual footage here, you know, there, there he is. Walking, they're not high production and it shows you, you turn around the corner and voila, there it is. That's great. Everybody hydrate. Stay hydrated, people. I think that both of us are quite interested in efficiency in communication. That's where a lot of these tutorial videos come in really handy. So the big granddaddy of it all is 30 by 40 Design Workshop by Eric in, uh, I think it's in Maine. So yeah, 30 by 40 is probably one of the biggest uh, channel out there in architecture and doing a really, really good job. And when I ask people to suggest things, yeah, that just keeps coming up. And I have known this channel for a long time. Uh, his channel, he, he kind of talks about everything. He, he runs a small practice, so he does small houses. But what he does is that it's beautiful production, but he also talks about very important skills uh, in architecture. And, and they're more in the case of sketching and drawing line weights, uh, and also model making. So it breaks it down into digestible parts and, and episodes that are actually very useful for mm. uh, students, especially. So if, especially those things. And then also how to transition from the hand sketching into, into the digital 
and how some of those principles still stays. So I think this channel is by far the best in terms of those kind of skills. Yeah, so we get a fair few um, requests for, you know, can you guys explain how, you know, Austin and Main Antarctic does the design stage or things like that. So you're saying this is quite a good resource for some of those more technical questions about how to produce clear drawings and how to transition between stages. Yes, and it does talk about the design stages and dealing with clients and all these kind of things. So, yeah, they, they, it's a very, very good channel for that. Although we'll probably do one of, uh, of, of our spin on, on that or probably a, a slightly different angle and different take on that as well. But, yeah, yeah. definitely this is by far the one of the best produced channels out there. It doesn't need much more selling. And the other ones, then we're moving into more in the digital realm. We have got uh, great channels like Show It Better. I mean, there are a lot of channels that just focus on Revit and softwares mm-hmm. and other kind of things. I think he focuses more on the graphical, digital graphical communication more than just the software. So the software is just a tool to achieve great graphical outcomes. So, and I think he focuses on that. How do you graphically produce something? How do you create architectural color palette? How do you design? How do you good at do a good urban site study? How do you make great diagrams? So uh, these are great. the types of ideas that uh, don't, it's not necessarily, it doesn't really matter what the medium is, whether it's a computer rendering or a hand drawing. It's more about what the use of that specific type of communication, how, how it should be applied. Yeah, but in, in some ways, yeah, also how to, how to do it, how do you actually make them uh-huh, look great okay. and be right. clear we've mentioned before and we'll probably get back to again is at the end of the day architects don't build things we do we're communicating ideas through many different mediums but we require somebody else to build them Um, so how we communicate requires often just as much design thinking as the thing we're designing we when we used to teach we used to say that students spend as much time working out how you can communicate this idea as uh, making a quality building because if it's all just in your head What's the point? It needs exactly, to but also, but also in practice as well. You know, you've been there. You've you've had staff that just would do a drawing because you told them to do a drawing without questioning what is the purpose of the drawing. Because yeah. at and the end how... of the day, it's about efficiency. So you know, if you're mm. going to do that. You're going to make it do as much as it needs yeah. and what it needs to achieve, rather than just I just did a drawing because you told me to. Yeah, and how it will be received, like. You know, we're emotional creatures. How will the, the client receive this information? What are we trying to communicate and how do we do it? So it's great having a variety of tools so that you can think about each time I've been asked to do this drawing, but what is it meant to achieve? But also even as a builder, you would be holding a documentation drawing. You've got a measuring tape in one hand and this uh, drawing on the other. How do you quickly find the information you need? What matters? Yeah, and if it, you don't communicate things clearly through diagrams and drawings to building builders, they just put their prices up. They have danger money. They have contingency. I don't quite understand it, so I'm just going to add 20% to my costs. Where if you can communicate it clearly, you get much better costs from your builders. Another one uh, along the same lines is one called Upstairs. Again, he focuses a lot on the graphics as well, but it looks like uh, there's a channel. Uh, recently, they started doing um, buildings and breakdown as well. It did the Arbor Alto house. It did in... France, uh, Maison oh. Louis Carré. But what's great about it, again, it's not just the, the fact that it's showing pictures, but there's a breakdown with plans and information. <laughs> so they actually walk you through with a lot more details, which is great. Again, that's quite rare that people show more than just pretty pictures and actually try to go out of the way to explain something in detail. And that's something that I think rings quite dear to Archie Marathon Channel as well. Yeah, that sounds really useful to a lot of people. I know we say the word student a lot. We are students. Exactly, exactly. And even the general public, we're all learning about this stuff. It's bloody complex. This sounds like a very generous way to communicate um, some pretty important buildings. Life-size city. Have you come across that? Yeah, you've showed me this. It's pretty funny. He starts just smashing, smashing things that he's not a fan of. Well, what's interesting is his Canadian Danish guy, Mikael, and uh, he actually has a TV show in Canada and it's been broadcast in 
uh, many other countries as well, 16 mm. other countries, I think. It's called Life Science City. <laughs> so yeah. this is the YouTube channel of that uh, spin-off. And he is like the, he's almost like the Anthony Bourdain of urbanism. And he's a big bike advocate. Actually, he pushed, he wrote books and advocate for, for the bike culture as well in Copenhagen. So, right. uh, but uh, yeah, he's, he's, uh, his channel. But what's great about it is um, there's, there's the famous one with the unholy trinity of bridge stupidity in Copenhagen. That's you know, the one that, I've seen. That, yeah. yeah, he just talks about how stupid architects are and this. Yeah, things that are just silly. So that's great. But I think the other stuff that he does, for example, uh, the most recent one, what he does, he, he just sits in front of the screen uh, and people mail in projects. Here's a, here's a terrible bit of urban design. What do you think? And he literally just draws it. He just draws over it and did, redesigns it and explains why these decisions are good and what what he thinks could be done so it's you know he's got a timer there in the corner and it says okay i can fix this so it's great to see that uh, design thinking being presented up front and speedy as well just to show look you can let's uh, scrutinize this have some something concrete that is drawn to have a discussion about yeah there's something wonderful and brave about that there's big lessons in that like it's amazing for some people students and professionals how long some people some things take like some people would take go oh I'll, I'll grab that task and i'll take two weeks and i'll come back to you and there's other people uh, the people you want to employ that can just critically look at something and just get into it not rush but just actually use their critical eye and produce something quite clear and not just wave their hands look i'm committing committing wrong or right it's on paper let's talk about it that's that's great so blessed arch uh, is the uh, Indian guy. He's in India. I think his stuff is really fun to watch, almost a sort of comical style that he, he presents the work. He goes into details about staff techs, uh, yeah. especially, and, um, and talks about their, their projects with a slightly critical eye as well. He does focus a lot on NATA, which is the National Aptitude Test for Architecture in India, because there are a lot of people on in social media just asking how do we go into architecture? What should we, you know, is architecture a good profession? Whatever. So he does cater for that, you know. But the thing is, there are videos he does that are actually really good breakdown. So there's the not only big famous names like Big Engels, he does talk about uh, some older projects. He, Louis Kahn, for example. Mm. You've got uh, Kenzo Tange there, you know, a few. Again, very entertaining videos to listen to. Yeah, it's good to hear that he makes it fun. Like, that's the one thing. I just, I think it's a, one of the most important parts of our job is life's really short and you're a long time dead. So surely people engage architects because they are equipped to create joyful spaces. So why not have joy? So then when I hear architects talk so seriously about architecture to the point that it's boring, I just wonder why. I remember a lecture by um, Snow Hetta. One of the first things he said was, architecture's not in important. Like, can we all just calm down? It's not actually that important but it's actually beautiful. So let's just concentrate on the fact that it's useful because of its beauty. It's not useful for like other important things like medicine and education, um, which is a, a kind of a gift when I saw him give this lecture. It's like, yeah, you know, the pressure's off. Let's actually just concentrate on joy and fun, not frivolous, important, you know, the importance of joy. So that's great. I look forward to seeing that one. That was interesting, Kev. Like, uh, I yeah, I haven't really gone to YouTube to look at what architectural contents on there. I'm great you've been able to curate it for me because I imagine there's a lot of stuff that's probably not worth watching. So this is good. Thanks for. Is it? And what do you guys think? Do you guys agree that these are pretty cool channels, or do you have you got some really good suggestions for us? Because um, we'd love to see other good content uh, on YouTube. Um, give them a look. Um, give us a like, give them a like, share the love, and don't forget Patreon. Links down there. We love you guys. Pew, pew.